How do you sound more sophisticated on the guitar? Inverted chords, my friend. Well, that's one of the ways. That's what I want to talk about today. Inversions are a way of creating melodic movement with harmony, or creating harmony with melodic movement. Originally, Western music was developed largely from vocal music. Individual singers would be singing lines that, if you looked at them vertically, they would happen to make up a chord, but really they were singing individual melodies. Each part would obviously have to be singable and also would have to move according to all kinds of rules of the day for how music was supposed to be made. An inversion is just a chord that does not have the root on the bottom. The root of the chord we can call one, other chord tones we can call three, five, seven, whatever they might be. If something other than the root is on the bottom, it is a chord inversion. On the guitar, there are two big ways to find these chord inversions. One is to take any chord shape and then figure out what the chord tones are. This D chord is a five, one, and three. And then on each string, find the next number up. Above five is one, so you have to find that on the same string. Above one is three, you find that on the same string. Above three is five find that on the same string, you find a guitar chord shape that is an inversion of the previous shape on the same three strings. I did a whole video on that a while ago, and I will link to that in the description. The other way is to move notes around on the fretboard using octave interval shapes and unison interval shapes. I also did a video explaining exactly that method recently, and I'll link to that. But if we take that same chord shape and I take the top note and I move it down an octave, and we want to be able to see all of those octave movement shapes on the guitar, if I move that down, well then I also get an inversion of the chord that now has the three on the bottom instead of before we had the five on the bottom. So they were both inversions and they were different inversions. I can now move this top note down and then I get another iteration of the chord that happens to be called root position. It's not an inversion. Root position and then first inversion is the third on the bottom. Second inversion is the fifth on the bottom. Third inversion would be the seventh on the bottom. So you can practice guitar chord shapes that way and inversions of chord shapes, but there's an important distinction I wanna make here today with this inversions lesson, and that's the function of inversions. So when we just practice, if I just did this thing where I've you know, found these inversion shapes, that's useful for mapping out the fretboard and stuff, but it's still technically not an inversion, functionally speaking, in, unless the bottom note of the overall music, so if you're playing in a band and the bass player is still playing the D, well, this is not an inversion of D then. Um, there's two worlds we're looking at now. The chord shape can be, you can say that that chord shape is, but musically it's not functioning as that at all. It's just functioning as a voicing of D and it sounds like D. So the function of inversions is for melodic bass movement, the actual low end of the music moving in a smoother or stepwise motion. So it doesn't have to jump around so much uh, as chords change because Obviously chords are going to change that aren't only next to each other. So in order for that line to be melodic and maybe move in a singable way, you'd have to play or sing or have the bottom note be in notes that are not always the root of the chord. So for this video, I just wanna show you some examples of inversions that are used in this actual functional way where the intention of the song or the piece of music is to have that lower end move in a specific way. The way this would be written is with a slash chord, and that's a letter slash another letter. So if you see C slash G, C over G, that is a C chord with G as the lowest note. Yes, G is always in the chord anyway. It's already the fifth of the chord. It's just saying we want that as the lowest note. For the most part, a slash chord is gonna be some type of inversion of the chord, just telling you mm, we specifically want that bottom note to be this, because if you do that, it's gonna move the bottom end of the sound a certain way that is more melodic, flowing, connected. I recently talked about an inversion concept of the five chord first inversion being used after the one chord and in between the one and the six chord. So one, five, six, but one first inversion, five, six. So that's probably the most common way to think of uh, in, in popular music, one of the most common inversions. So for that, I use the example, Don't Think Twice by Bob Dylan. It ain't no use to sit and wonder why, babe. A minor over G, four, 
chord. So I'm gonna use that as an example right now. We have the one chord, and then we have the five chord first inversion, and then we have the six chord, and then we have the six chord with the seven in the bass, the flat seven in the bass. So third inversion, A minor seven, A minor over G, and then four chord. So what a great example of using two inversion shapes. And the whole point, if there was a bass singer, if this was a choir, it's moving uh, stepwise, very singable, very nice, very connected. Otherwise it would be right? We lost that connecting step, that inner step, and we jumped around a little more. Not that that sounds bad, but you see the difference. Next song example I want to do is You've Got a Friend. I used this in a recent video as well. You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. When the road looks rough ahead and you're miles and you're miles from your nice warm bed. Ah, it's so cool. It's so cool. When the road looks. That is a first inversion E flat major chord. So it's not going when the road looks. Rough ahead. Totally works, right? Yes, of course. We're so used to hearing guitars, you know, strum, jump around like this, but the beauty is in the subtlety. It really is just gorgeous. So voice leading. And, and that's what it is, right? The term voice leading obviously comes from actual voices, right? So if we can listen in this deeper way to individual notes, we will also open up our hearing quite a bit, our, our ear training and our ability to, to follow what's going on in music. And uh, I just find it to be just a great joy on the guitar to, to make these little tweaks to kind of arrange things in a way that feels like every note is moving as much as possible. It's quite hard on the guitar, but, but notes are moving in a way that are intentional instead of just jumping around. I did a whole video on the song In My Life by the Beatles. And I just because I wanted to talk about one chord choice, and that chord choice happens to be a third inversion dominant seventh chord. So let's look at that. There are places I remember. That's the chord right there. So this is an A7 third inversion. This is A7 with G. You could say it's A over G or A7 over G. And this is in the key of A. So we have A, one chord, E, five chord, F sharp minor, six chord. Hey, you can hear it kind of go out of the key there for a second. Um, very cool. It's a chromatic chord. I talked about that recently, chromatic chords. This is a secondary dominant to D to the four chord. So this is five of four. That's from, from the other video. So, and then the four chord turns minor. That's also in that chromatic chords lesson. But we're talking about this inversion here. Very cool. There are places I remember. Excuse the singing, uh, if that's okay. I gotta, you know, include it for for the context. Uh, but that is a very cool chord choice with with the motion here, from the F sharp minor going up. I just absolutely love that. So here's a cool progression with inversions that is going to be very recognizable. It's going to use this progression that's kind of the Stairway to Heaven progression. But it's gonna have that moving line. Actually, in this in this case, I had that in the bottom. But really, as the as like the bass note movement, the song, the classic standard, My Funny Valentine, does that in the bass movement. D minor, D minor major seven over C sharp, D minor seven over C. So third inversion, D minor six over B. So. Ah, just gorgeous, right? So that's just a D minor triad with that bass note. D minor triad with C sharp. This is D minor triad right here with the bass note still moving. Still D minor triad with the bass note moving. And now we move it down. We just move that note down one more half step. We still have that shape up here that by itself is a D minor triad. But now this is actually just a B flat major seven chord. So ah, just a gorgeous way to get to that chord. So you can do that same progression without the inversion. It's still gonna sound cool. Hear how it really misses something though? You know, if I wanna get to this area over here, 
um, the bass movement didn't target it in the same way, of course, right? It just went. So if you check out any classical music or classical guitar, you're going to see inversions all over the place. They're much more essential to that sound. In, in classical music and in classical guitar, every voice really is treated with with absolute intentionality. So check out this etude by Matteo Carcassi. This is a study in A major. That's uh, kind of common in classical guitar. The second chord is this E7 first inversion. Just another example of, of inversion. Um, it just would not be the same. In classical music, every note has so much intentionality behind it. So we have this bass movement is so critical. Otherwise it would just be dum, dum, dum. It does not have that movement. And one other inversion example, something called the neighbor four chord. And I know this is a lot. If you can get one little thing out of this whole lesson, awesome. I just like to throw a lot of examples out just so we can kind of all soak it in. The neighbor four chord is the idea that, let's say we're on A and the four chord is one, two, three, four, D. And the five, the fifth note of D is the A note. Okay, so if you're on A and you go to D, you could jump to the D root, A, D, one, four, one, four, or you can keep the D, the A down there and you have a D that is second inversion because the five is in the bass. So that's D over A. The neighbor four chord idea is that like, if it's a very quick change, you could say, it's kind of a neighbor four chord functioning that way. But don't worry about that. It's more just the idea of, oh, you can go to the four chord, keep the root uh, in the base of the, of the whole key. So we have A, and I'm going to this voice, you know, four that I like. Dun, 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 same note in the bass staying right there. So I hope that helps specifically to introduce this idea of the functional inversion. The harmonic function of an inversion is that the whole sonic quality of the piece of music has this low-end singable connectivity happening to it in, in terms of inversions that you would really say this moment in the song has an inversion happening. As opposed to this other idea of inversions, especially as guitar players, we're, we're thinking of like an inversion shape, right? So if I play this D7 third inversion, I'm actually just using that as a shape. So I might jump around to all these shapes during a D7 chord. So if there's a D7 chord and I'm wanting to play around with it, I'm going around to all these inversion guitar shapes, but the sonic quality of the overall piece of music, I wouldn't say uh, that I'm thinking of every time I have a lower note on the guitar that I actually want the bass player to play that or, or thinking of the whole, mostly I'm just thinking of D. So these are two separate ways to now think of inversions. I, I think working on a bunch of inversion guitar shapes is fantastic. It's just very different than the functional use of inversions in actual compositions. And I'll probably do a video in the future on jazz chord inversion shapes like this because I love how many options it gives us when we think of one chord, we can move around and have a lot of motion and interactivity happening. I'm getting close to wrapping up this series on the theory of harmony and chords on the guitar, but we still have some really cool stuff coming up. The next two videos are going to be on the chords that come out of the harmonic minor scale and the chords that come out of the melodic minor scale. So stay tuned for those. I put out a video every week and I'm looking forward to seeing you in those future lessons. Take care and happy practicing.